Um, so I've, what we'll do, I've organized the slides and I will present, show them to you and click forward and Lois will talk and answer questions and object mm -hmm. or whatever occurs to her to do. Um, and I thought um, this morning when it was, uh, seems like a slushy, snowy morning that it might be fun to begin not only with this beautiful 1989 self-portrait, mm -hmm. um, which you've all seen for the last few minutes, but also with some paintings of winter. Because Lois, you once said that winter and summer Outside were the seasons the that, you, yeah. that you preferred. Right. Most people say spring and fall, right. but not you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a little bit my anxiety. I did a talk with, you know, there were five great painters born in 1927. Lois, and Alex Katz. Um, Who else? Po uh, Resica. Resica. Um, Resica, yes. And uh, Jane Freilicher and Alfred Leslie. All uh -huh. your same year. And I did a talk with Alfred Leslie uh, a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And um, Alfred is somebody who doesn't just answer a question with a, with a monosyllable. <laughs> Alfred goes long. Sometimes, sometimes almost too long. So there's but just I, one I, question, that was the evening. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. It made yeah. my job easy. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to go on. We're going to look at some, I thought as a kind of a hors d'oeuvre, we would look at some winter pictures, just a few of them, of, from over different years. But these were all painted outdoors, mostly in New Jersey, in one of the three locations that you winter, were in. If it's winter, it's New Jersey, for the most part. <laughs> If it's winter, yeah. it's New Jersey. Right. Um, so here's one from 94, as you can see, relatively small masonite. Right, they're all relatively small because I like to go outside and paint them on the spot, and that's where they're done. So they can't be too large, and they can't be canvas because that's inconvenient, and if you drop it, it puts a hole through it. So board is very durable and useful for outside painting. This one struck me because as in much of your work, there's a really strong singular central shape. Yeah. There's a kind of right. almost figural shape in this one yeah. that, that activates and dominates the composition. Mm -hmm. and, and again, in interviews, you've sometimes talked about drawing that shape as the kind of right. beginning of, is that what would have happened to here, for instance? I think I'm more conscious of shape than form, even, mm -hmm. you know. Of linear shape. It's always been that way, yeah. And, and what determines whether this painting, sometimes a small, a masonite panel like this will go on to become a, a bigger painting on Yeah, linen. right. What, what, how do you feel like that decision happens when, with, for instance, this one didn't? Is that right? There, I don't I haven't seen. You know, a there's related... not a bigger one. Yeah. So what what makes you decide that it's you're excited enough, or that you want to continue, or that it deserves a bigger panel, a bigger canvas? That's a good question. I can't really tell you what the answer is. Uh, but I was just thinking about shapes, and how I I look for shapes more than. I think it goes back to 1950s and abstract painting when flatness was prime. Yeah. So I'm still looking for flat shapes in a way to start. Mm -hmm. And if form comes out of it later, that's almost secondary. And, so. and that, that something like that would also be true of a painting Well, something like, like this. that was like, oh my God, what a... What a collection of cubes, you know. And there it was right in my face on the bank of the river. Uh -huh. And uh, sometimes what you see is so exciting that you, you, you really, uh, it's just, you know, you have to try to paint it. But this is so, a bigger one, as I remember. This is the bigger one. There were several small ones. Mm -hmm. So, in fact, this larger painting is done from something that was on a masonite pad. This one's canvas or linen, but it was from something that was smaller or maybe more than one painting uh -huh. might have contributed. Several, to it. 
several yeah. smaller panels I think, would... I think it's just like the small one, actually. But I thought to myself, this could be uh, challenging uh -huh. if it were larger scale. I think it's like trying to project what the larger scale will do for it, uh -huh. whether it's worth doing that or not, you know? Some things are larger or smaller, and some things are smaller or larger, you know? <laughs> it sounds great, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This one also is one of the rare ones where it feels like s modernism, a kind of Cezanne memory is yeah. more explicitly present. Usually that's not so, but, but I feel like that's happening here. Does that seem that way for you as well? That, that, it's, that it's, it's a Cezanne-esque. It's nodding to Cezanne, yeah? Oh. Or, yeah, Cezanne-esque. Yeah, yeah, right, I'm sure he's there in, uh -huh. in a lot of things that uh -huh. I see, yeah, right. I'll, I'll go through a few more of this winter run. Okay. This is another yeah. big, big yeah. one. Um, Again, it was something that happened, uh -huh. uh, which I saw and thought, "Ooh, boy, this looks like a revelation. Let's get it down fast." And uh, I mean, you do see these things in nature that are powerful shapes, and they seem to go beyond just the image, just the landscape image itself. So, but it's just chance. I mean, I was out there because I was interested in the way the ice broke up in, in a pond. And also the, the shape on the right was snow on top of the ice, I think, that was left over. And then it had, had melted in the middle. And then I was standing there a while, and then the sun began to set, and the, that happened in the water. So some of these things, you start out with one simple idea, and it kind of grows as you're standing there. I, I wasn't even sure what I was looking at in this one, but it's so it's the, yeah. the, the, oh. the sunset reflection is water over ice. Is that right? The whole Look. thing... Is a frozen is a frozen pond, uh -huh. and the sun would be off to the left, mm -hmm. and uh, somehow I saw that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it could be a lie, but at any rate, I saw it. Yeah. Because another thing that strikes me, and I'll go on as we're talking, is that you mm. don't feel you can invent. No, no, I can't. Yeah, I can't invent a thing. Everything has to... I have to see it. Yeah. And then a lot of the painting is editing, then. Is that right? A lot of the painting is what? Editing. Editing. Choosing what to leave out. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not aware of leaving much out, but if you're going to get back to basics and start with the basics, halfway through you realize, oh, I'm done. <laughs> you know, no more detail. This is enough. Yeah. Yeah. This painting, again, in this little group I, I wanted to start with, is striking because people often talk about solitude in your work. Yeah. And I feel like you're a little bit resistant, and so am I, to seeing them that way. It, it seems in yeah. danger of making them sentimental or expressive in a way that's not their real nature. But here, with this trail of footsteps, you can, I can see how people might, oh, okay. might push yeah. us... Um, right. on that Actually, it's, it's the Delaware Water Gap, uh -huh. which is pretty well attended by people getting out of their cars and looking at it. Mm -hmm. And uh, what else can I tell you? It, it's, it's very beautiful in the winter. It's beautiful at all times. And I go back there frequently. It's, it's, near, it's near Blairstown. It's not far. So it's, it's like a great motif to watch. And we recognize in painting after painting that big kind of middle tone hill that's right. the far side. Right. It's two mountains. The river is going along and cutting between them. And it's, it's just always interesting to see it. I'm never there in the summer, so it's only uh -huh. a good place in the winter, fall, and spring.
Right. Because but the I summer, think in the in the summer it would be loaded with people uh -huh. and lots of leaves on the trees. So it's 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 I'm happier there in the winter anyway. When it's yeah. more dour and bleak, right and down to the bone. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What yeah. about this? Is an unusual one. Moon ring. Um, right. This I, is this was something I saw in the middle of the winter in Maine. Uh -huh. I went up to my house in Maine, which a friend of mine lived in over the winters, and so the house was nice and warm. And I went out at night because there was this wonderful, brilliant moonlight. And when I got outside and looked at the sky, it had this wonderful ring around the moon. So it seemed like, wow, this is really a subject for painting. But anyway, it was, it was that contrasty. The, the, the light was so brilliant. The snow was really white. The roof was white, the smoke was coming up, and uh, there was this tremendous ring. So it was hand-delivered, so to speak. <laughs> but it, but ha the hand, was your hand drawing it at With first? With small or? panels. Uh -huh. I did about three small panels, and then, then I thought, you know, this is bigger. This has to be this big. This is bigger than these three small panels. So yeah. I... Using those, I made a larger version. Yeah. So this is the fourth of the of the group. Right. Yeah. I think so. Mm -hmm. um, this isn't strictly a winter. No. I mean, I can't tell whether this is winter or not. Right. But this, this is, is not winter. Another yeah. one with a with a very a big simple shape, but then the shape is complicated by this reflection crossing it. Right. It seemed a little bit related to the one before the moon. Um, and these complicated cloud shapes. And then I guess it's a reflection of the moon that we're seeing. In right, it's a reflection of the moon. It was in a parking lot in Rockland, Maine. Uh -huh. And uh, it was reflecting a building that's a church, which is also now a museum, and the moon, all in this puddle. When I came out to find my car, here was this puddle mm -hmm. <laughs> with this wonderful reflection in it. And so the next day, right away. So what did I do? I can't remember. I must have. But does it matter? I must have had a trusty bag of paint and a board or something. I can't. <laughs> I can't remember whether I then went back another day. To see, but the puddle could have been gone if I did that, so I, I'm not sure. But in general, yeah. does it matter to hap that it happens because you're really responding so directly to things you've seen? Yeah. Does it have to happen the next day or within the next couple of days to for you to to get it to to well, even if you have a drawing, or does it does it sometimes sit for a month or two and kind of get no no it doesn't over? sit for a month or two no. Uh, it's 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 either that day or co go back and find it, but uh, I had some friends that would we would all go out at night and paint, uh -huh. so we'd find all this stuff, and uh, it's nice to go out with other people because when the police come by to check out whether you're crazy or not, you know you can point out that you're not the only one, uh -huh. and. Uh, uh, just to know there's cult. somebody else yeah. around, yeah. yeah. So it's 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 one of those that from one of those forays out into Rockland at night to see what we could find. In both of these paintings, does the unusualness of the f composition, the format, the big circle, and then this puddle shape yeah. allow you to do something as potentially uh, uh, cliched as painting moonlight? Is that that, would be that allows you to paint what otherwise might seem trite or mawkish, to paint the oh. mo moonlit scene at night, which could be the, the moon, postcard yeah. moon. Yeah. But maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, yeah. I mean, I've stood out at night and just painted the moon because it's between my house and my barn. It comes right up. It's right there. Uh -huh. uh, so you're not wary of it. Over and over again, you know. Every time it's full, you think, oh, my God, i got to get out and make another. <laughs> but usually they're just step flashing, so it's not like you're, 
you know, making these huge paintings. You were talking about the small aluminum panels right. that you paint on that right. are used for flashing yeah. on buildings. Yeah. Which is, mm -hmm. real, that's just in the last 20 years or something that you're using I've those been or doing, more? Well, some of those, you know, you do and then you think, oh, I should make something bigger out of this. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's like, it's a very convenient thing to have because in 15 minutes you can be prepared to put something down. Yeah. But that's usually at home. It's usually not out wandering around. But just if people are keeping track, there are three supports. There's flashing, masonite, right. and linen panels. Right. And, and they're, they're the, the size is yeah, from the flashing, which is tiny, to the masonite panels, which are usually medium portable size, to a stretched canvas, which is in the barn. I'm not going to take it out anywhere, probably. And most of those choices are about convenience and practicality and right. being able to exactly. paint yeah. directly without anything right. getting in your way. Yes. But you, you didn't, we'll get to this in a little bit, but you didn't always paint from nature. You painted from drawings in the early part of your career. I did, And yeah. maybe we'll, I'm worried if we go too but slowly, we won't get through everything, so I'm going to skip, although I love this waterfall painting which is, yeah. I think, also in New Jersey, right? Right, that was New Jersey. Mm -hmm. and, um, and we could, one of, there are so many ways I could have organized your, your images, either geographically through the three sites or yeah. chronologically or yeah. through the seasons. And we could have gone from winter into spring with the cherry tree and clouds here, yeah. a really beautiful one. But I thought we would, we would double back in time instead and talk for a minute about your education, since we're here at the studio <laughs> school in an art school and look just very quickly at some of the people you studied with. Right. So um, Byron Thomas, I think, is on the left. And there's Is some he? Okay, you know, I, I don't remember his work, frankly. Oh, oh yeah? Oh, he was oh. a wonderful I, man and a lovely uh -huh. teacher. And he had a show here when this was the museum. When this was the Whitney Museum. And I, I remember coming to see it, but I... Yeah, that, okay. The tree is yeah, on the was, left. He, yeah, uh-huh, uh -huh. right. And then Peter Busa. The the right? Peter Busa. Or oh, Busa? Peter Busa, right. The, the basic design teacher was Peter Busa. Uh -huh. and, uh, and this is at Cooper, right? This was at Cooper Union, right. Yeah. And maybe we should, for, I mean, a lot of people know your biography, but for those who don't, you were the youngest of five girls. Right. And but you the, lost both your parents, your dad in World War II, yeah, he before got you were sunk, 15. He, I just bought a book, or someone just bought a book that about the convoys that were going back and forth from England, Iceland, Russia, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And most of them got sunk. 60% of the American merchant marine was sunk at that point in that place. And he was part of that. In 1942 or three 43, or something. 43, actually. It was kind of late. Yeah, uh -huh. it was 43. Yeah. Yeah. So you mm. were raised by your one of your older sisters. Right. She was 24, and, and uh, I was about 14. And yeah. going to art school was a little bit of an accident. You had a teacher who recommended Cooper? The high school in had Montclair. a very good art course in mm. Montclair, a beautiful room with a banana tree <laughs> and a big skylight. And they had some practice teachers that were, you know, college art students who came to help and they sat us down one day and told us about Pratt, Cooper, Parsons, all the schools that were available in New York because here we are 15 miles away in New Jersey but certainly I knew nothing about any of those schools and uh, they said that Cooper Union was free you just had to take a test mm -hmm. so another girl and I got ourselves into the city, took the test, and we both got in. So that was the beginning of my career at Cooper Union. Yeah. And then, so you were studying with these two, and also right. with, um, um, uh, Tully Filmus so on the left? He was the drawing teacher. The drawing teacher? Oh, that's, oh, okay. I was thinking that we could see oh, in, in, um, in, the, in those trees, little intimations of your future, and in Peter Busa, your shape making, and then, and then in Tully Filmus, I'm just kind of projecting here, but yeah. there's something about the, the 
frequent thinness of your paint. Yeah. I, maybe it's just because his name is Film. <laughs> but his paint, I looked at a bunch of images. I had never, I'd never known nice. Tully Filmus, but they are, yeah. they're thinly painted. And then on the right is well, Mercy. I mean, you had one of his paintings just a minute ago, right? No, that was Byron Thomas. Yeah, yeah. it was Byron Thomas on the painting left. teacher, yeah. I don't know what, yeah, what did Tully Filmus, you didn't find his paintings. Well, just the one on the left, the, the Tully oh, Filmus is the, oh, the oh, you that, can see it's, yeah, it's okay. signed um, Tully Filmus yeah, on the bottom very, there. Re, yeah, it was very realistic. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Classic yeah. kind of 30s Which sort of Sawyer-like. Which going on, yeah. Yeah. It almost, it's interesting that he isn't better known than he, than he was. Well, maybe really. it looks too much like other p period I guess paintings, so. right? Yeah, yeah. Mm. And mm. and the one on the right, do you recognize you're, that? You're saying who's that? But that's him also. No, no, that's Mercedes Matter. Oh, it's Mercedes for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't recognize it because when we had the Tanager Gallery, uh -huh. uh, Mercedes, we had a show of Mercedes drawings. Mm-hmm. I thought they were more abstract. Well, s some were. I, you yeah. know, I. Yeah. She's, to me, she's always been a kind of name and a name as, especially yeah. associated yeah. with this school and right. the way drawing is taught here. Yeah. But honestly, I don't know her her work well, well enough. Well, she was very kind of secretive about her work. Oh, really? Yeah. But she was a forceful person, right? I know she was very. For she started this school for God's sake. She started that, <laughs> but but as a as a person who was showing her work, she was very hesitant about it. She uh -huh. seemed to be afraid to stick it out there. So she was sort of disambitious about her own career. Yeah. Huh. It was funny. Yeah. But we're yeah, she was she was a difficult person to show the work of because she was so kind of nervous about it. Huh. Yeah. Hmm. So but your time at Cooper, Katz was a fellow student. There were right. other other strong students, he, I guess. He was he was actually a year after me. Uh huh. And uh, my friend Gene Cohen started went out with Alex. So uh -huh. that's how I get to know Alex. Yeah, she was in my year, and he was she was a very close friend, and he was a year after us. Yeah. So I didn't know Alex so well in school. Really. Uh huh. Yeah. But that climate in the 40s yeah. um, was, and, and shortly after you graduated from Cooper, right. there was abstract expressionism, was, yeah. you were close right to the Cedar Bar, to the epicenter of it. were at Cooper Union and two blocks away. Yeah. <laughs> but so, frankly, I was kind of oblivious to it till after getting out of Cooper Union. Mm-hmm to what was going on on 10th Street and up and down 4th Avenue, the studios, the artists, the so, whole thing. So it was, these paintings, we're looking at relatively early paintings, but they're still 10 years later, after you'd um, absorbed that and been to Rome a couple of times. Yeah. Um, so what was I doing for the 10 years, is what you're saying? Yeah, what no, was no. I doing? <laughs> I don't know. God. I'm trying to remember. I, I yeah. guess I'm just thinking, it makes sense to me that that's a lot to absorb and to figure out, I mean, your generation had to deal with how to move on from abstract expressionism. And some people continued it and some people, I mean, in a way, this is, paintings like this, these chickens are yeah. your version of negotiating abst abstract expressionist kind of wriggling, gorky forms, right? Is that what we're seeing? That's what I would have imagined was in your mind. Yeah. De Kooning, so. Gorky, those right, people. Right, right. Yeah, I don't know how but retaining it was, yeah. Really, of what they were doing. I mean, let me see. Where were they showing? They were showing, they began, when did De Kooning have that show on 57th Street, the first one? Do you remember at Egan Gallery? Oh, I think that's 48. 48. That would have been the year that I was graduating from Cooper. Yeah. yeah. So I remember seeing it. I'll go. Uh, I'll move on as we're talking and just show a few more of these animal paintings that are yeah, kind yeah. of pattern yeah. motifs, right. um, yeah. and they're very spare. A lot of open space, even especially, for instance, very in this large. Next one. The, the largest painting I ever did was that one of the two that you just. Oh, this yeah. one is smaller, but 
This yeah, is the biggest one. Yeah, that one's one. very large, yeah. Uh-huh, 48 by yeah. 72. Yeah. So it's kind of New York school painting right. size. It, I definitely the, must have been looking at New York, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, at that point, yeah. And, and trying to use it while I was looking at stuff outside. I was, I mean, those cows were wandering around in Maine and I was making, you know what it is? Those paintings were made from drawings. I have one of the drawings here. These are all made from drawings. But so this, at a so point, drawings like this would be, yeah. I don't know if you could see it from yeah. where you're sitting, Lois, but would be the beginning of a painting like this. Right, exactly, yeah. yeah. So, uh, Alex was always out in the landscape directly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I, after I got my place at Cushing, I thought, gee, I should try what Alex says. I'll go out and paint directly. Because you board. had shared a house with Katz and his first wife for right. quite a few right. summers. And then exactly. you were painting kind of French style, like the old French style, where you draw yeah. in the summer and paint in right. the winter. Right, exactly. But that changed when you... The, divide, the house got divided and you... When I moved to Cushing. Moved right. to Cushing and you began painting. Yeah. And this would be in 67, I think? Yes. That, that mm -hmm. you began... Right. And this is the first time, 20 years after art school almost, that you began yeah, painting yeah. from Directly life. from the So spot. here's a few more of these. is not yet, I guess. And this well, is... Well, that cool. actually... Yeah. That is from a drawing. Yeah. The those are tree. all from drawings. So. It looks amazingly live. It yeah. looks, you know... I, if you yeah. told me it was made on site, well, I would have believed thing, you. Well, for one thing, the the other one that you had was too big to be doing it this directly. One. For it's a big yeah. painting, yeah. so just unwieldy. Yeah, they had to be from a drawing. But that this one one's too. smaller. Yeah, this one's yeah. small. It could have been, but it wasn't. It's the reason it's uh, it's like a drawing in that I never could cover the canvas completely. As long as I worked that way, there was always a lot of bare canvas. Because it stays it's related true to, to its drawing, drawing yeah, yeah. origins. Right. So then in 67, so this, this would, barn and house would be one of the earliest. It's the first painting of my place in Maine, yeah. The house in Cushing. Right. Uh -huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. And, and it, once you began, what was it like when you began working? Did you know right away that you preferred, that you liked it, working live, working direct? Yeah, I liked it, but I couldn't tell what I was doing. You know, I'd, I'd paint, and I think, I can't tell. But then, when I took it away from the motif, and uh -huh. stuck it in the barn, uh -huh. and looked at it, oh, it looks like a painting. I guess maybe I'll do another one. Uh -huh. But I couldn't tell that as long as I was painting it in front of whatever it was, because it definitely didn't look like what was... Cause, out there, because <laughs> it doesn't, right? There's the no way outcompeted. There's no way the you can paint what your eye is seeing. So, so I don't know. You make some kind of transcription in the process, and it took a while to get used to the difference between the two and live with it. But that's yeah. I hadn't thought about that. So, because in some ways, going from here to here, yeah, looks. For a second, like a step backwards, like the definiteness is there's it's a little mushy, but you're able to paint the whole painting. Yeah. And right. In a way that you've you've left the drawing feeling behind. Yeah. And then you continue. This is the next year. Yeah. You have by now your place on Second Street where you still live, right? Right. right. And you were painting just out the window. Yeah. Um, I didn't. I in other words, I came back to New York. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a pile of drawings. Other years, I would always have a pile of drawings. I could spend the winter working from my drawings, making paintings from drawings. Mm -hmm. This year, I came back, and I hadn't done any drawings at all. So I thought, gee, you know. So <laughs> I looked out the window uh -huh. and thought, well, okay, let me try this. And So I kept so doing it. But this site, it's a, sometimes it's referred to as a men's shelter, sometimes as a jail. Right. No, no well, I never called it a jail. It's oh, always really? the men's shelter. But it's the it shelter for the Bowery, jail. for the guys on the Bowery. It's, it's a shelter for homeless men on the Bowery. Wow. It's so a city-run shelter. Uh -huh. There are a lot of hotels on the Bowery that are men's hotels, Slop but houses. this yeah. one is, is run by the city. Uh -huh. Yeah. And it's on 3rd Street. It backs onto the cemetery. The cemetery has no stones in it except in the wall. Uh -huh. So it's this big, grassy plot. 
But the shelter is the building on the right side of the image. Right, the biggest building and, is the and, shelter. And, th and this is the cemetery, the, the, the horizontal surface is the cemetery? Cemetery, right. The whole middle of that block is a cemetery. I used to think it was a soccer field for the men's shelter or something. But <laughs> no, no, no. No. Yeah. It has, a, it has an alleyway out to the Second Avenue side, uh -huh. which is how you get into the cemetery. But it's an old cemetery, which, you know, nobody it stopped being used in the 30s, is uh -huh. what I understand. I mean, I wasn't around to see that. But, but did any of that matter to you in painting it? Did the men's shelter, no. cemetery, no. those? No, no. <laughs> it was what was out the window. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter anyway. Yeah, totally divorced from its social. Yes, content. The, the fact that it's yeah it doesn't make any difference what it is. Yeah, if you painted a skull, would it be likewise well, just a formal uh, motif? Yeah, yeah, I would try to not care what it was uh -huh. if I'm going to paint it. Yeah, right. So, you can't get involved with the subject. Well, so the famous passage where Monet talks about seeing his dying wife's yeah. face. Well, I don't and think I've a pale yeah. green color, and he hated his own formalism. Yeah. But you don't feel that way. Well, it's I don't think I'd be painting my dying husband. <laughs> no, I don't. You think just would. He would. had more guts than than I've got for subject matter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Right. So we'll, yeah. this is another of this beautiful sequence. This was sequence. a foggy day. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. With the same yeah, trees, I began to realize, same. you know, this thing is amazing because it's different at every season and every kind of weather and it just it kept changing. Mm -hmm. it was, mm -hmm. And these are mm -hmm. from the early, the first couple of years of you painting out Six, that window. 67 and 68. This was the very, this was the largest and the last one. After this, I think, and I've had enough. I've got to stop uh -huh. with this subject. And here suddenly it becomes so uh, hard-edged. It becomes yeah, almost like right. It's but a, you know, during that era, uh -huh. the uh, paintings were all hard-edge. It was the uh, wasn't the uh, what what came the after pop? the uh, you're thinking of it pop was the pop and up people, uh -huh. and they were very clean and very hard-edge. So, you know, you're very influenced by what's going on. So I was very influenced and cleaned up my act and uh, <laughs> made very clean looking paintings for a while. Uh -huh. Yeah. But also based on the, the I mean, this wasn't I mean, you don't want to be life. totally out of sync with your time, you know, uh -huh. with your era. But your way of being in sync was just to clean up your edges. Just what? To clean up your edges. Just, just the, the um, the facture, the, it wasn't about taking on commercial imagery or... No, no, no. Yeah. It was there, yeah. And, and is there a reason, I mean, the other, why didn't that happen in the earlier ones? If you're saying pop was kind of leaking into the perifer your peripheral field, why yeah. didn't it leak in the ones, we, uh, the one before and the one before that? The ones in the kind of, you... No, no, I mean the earlier oh, ones oh. of the same motif that... Oh, let's see. Uh, you know, if we were looking <laughs> yeah. at this... Pop doesn't enter the well, it's enter also, there. Well, it's also the weather. Uh -huh. You know, the, so the weather sun, changed. So it was a beautiful sunny day <laughs> with all these wonderful shadows. Uh -huh. But this is the first one into which I introduced the window frame. Mm -hmm. So then that began to make me get more involved with windows and window frames and so forth. That went on for quite a long time. Because it's also, right, it's the architectonic form, not just the clean edges, is a right. big change from the kind of wriggling, de Kooning-ish brush strokes that we'd seen yeah. in yeah. the images just a few slides back. Right. And that stays. Yeah. That the form Pretty becomes yeah. architectonic, even when you're out in the woods. Like here, yeah. this is a yeah. beautiful, big uh, three-panel piece <laughs> from a little later. This is a big painting. It's too bad that it... Oh, well, okay, yeah, it looks big there. It looks very small. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's, it's actually three panels, and I was very interested in... I started with the bottom panel, which is right where the, the triangle cuts off. If you cut where the triangle is, that's the painting I was interested in making. The and triangle then, of path, you mean? Yeah, in other the words... Uh -huh. 
In other words, or the, the house of the was house. like a rectangle and the woods were at the bottom. I see, okay. But when I was in the process of doing it, uh, at some point I s thought, you know, it would be really interesting to do a painting with a triangle sitting right at the bottom. Uh -huh. So while I'm the doing it, I'll, I'll make it fit on top of the other one. I'll make it the same size and just go up a little farther. Uh -huh. And then after I got to the top of that one, I thought, well, the woods are even taller. Maybe I should keep going. So th <laughs> the third section is actually a little bit bigger, you know, than the other two. It's taller. It's huh. not bigger. It's a little higher. So three unequal panels. It's what I had, yeah. And so, you're essentially kind so of I just craning your neck back. Yeah, I was craning my neck. Exactly, uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, so it, that was fun. It just kept, the painting grew by itself. I didn't really have any control over the total thing at the start. I didn't, I did not conceive of it as being this. Uh -huh. I conceived of the bottom one. That was a brainstorm, I thought. Uh -huh. And then the, the second one was another brainstorm, but finally it was the whole thing. But, but they, each, uh, they each should work. If you took it all apart, they're fine. Uh -huh. Each yeah. one individually. Each would be one fun by too. itself. Yeah, yeah. it'd be fun to look yeah. at them both ways. Right. Yeah. Um, this is another one from the same period that, right. that um, shows this. You're another canvas off in the woods because you this would leave time the canvas overnight. I set up overnight. in the woods. Right. I would leave them overnight, tie a piece of plastic over the, you know, cover it with plastic in case it rained because it was a pretty large canvas. I don't know what size it is, but it, it was too large to be bothered hauling back and forth. Uh -huh. So I devised a, a scheme of getting a big piece of plastic and tying the whole thing to a tree. And uh, then I could come back the next day and set up and paint. It was, it was very good. It was summer. It was pleasant. So it's a little bit like the vertical painting in that it's kind of panel leads to panel leads to panel. Yeah. That here we've got the painting that we're seeing and then the other painting and presumably on the other side of the ridge there's maybe another Lowestad painting. Yeah, and that's two what more. happened. Yeah, then I, the thing is you see one painting and then you're wandering around and you see, you begin to see more paintings. Once you get your eyes into that mode you start seeing them everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so but I the do kind, of, the kind of shapes you're seeing in these arc, architectonic doesn't seem exactly right. Yeah. But I'm, in several different interviews, you've talked about... Structure. Yeah, kind of a city-like space in the country. Yeah. That, that vertical painting and here yeah. as well. Yeah. These, these limbs seem kind of carpentered almost. They seem... Like, like the buildings in the city. Yeah, like buildings, yeah. like um, like mm. milled lumber, right, morphing yeah. into a, a, a mm -hmm. dead stick. Yeah, Th that they're ruler-ish, um, although they're not. You're not stylizing them into some mechanical form either. Right, but they're they're quasi-urban. Uh huh. I mean, that's, yeah. that's what. Yeah, that's the way you feel. Looking at them. well, I mean that's fine. When you you said, I'm partly quoting you. You didn't say quasi urban, but you said yeah. I'm I'm adjusting everything to look like a city kind of space. Oh, all right. Well, it's <laughs> look. People say all kinds of things. <laughs> so you have your. Uh, I I feel a little bit like well, I'm suddenly on a Senate panel. <laughs> and you're a, okay. Mizad, did you yeah. or did you not? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. On page seven, I yeah, have here yeah, yeah. quoted as. Now, all I can tell you is for a couple of years, I was really taken with those woods. They were directly across the road from my house. And that went on for two, maybe three years. And then the fourth year, I went into the woods, and it was like the door shut. Huh. The woods weren't going to give me another blooming thing. <laughs> it was like that. They just, you know, all this stuff was re revealed uh -huh. and then all of a sudden that you've had it. We're not. <laughs> that was the end of painting in the woods. 
It's a, it was a very of, strange but sensation. But there's another element. Yeah. might be you were friends with Neil Welliver, who was painting in the woods. Was that was who? Neil Welliver? Yeah, Neil was definitely painting in the woods, right. And were you guys talking about painting in the woods? And Not really. <laughs> I mean, we were talking, but not about painting in the woods, yeah. Or that I, I mean, I can't remember any marvelous, outstanding conversations with Neil about the woods. <laughs> <laughs> it just never came up? It probably did. It, it's uh, even more now. It's like the Russia investigation. Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing is, he, he was, at this point, these, these paintings are in Cushing, and Neil was over at Lincolnville. Uh -huh. Oh, so I see. I, I, you know. totally. No, but I mean, he appeared. Cushing, Lincolnville, it's totally Neil, different. <laughs> Neil was a, a student of Alex's somewhere, maybe Yale, something. Uh -huh. Somehow they met. I don't remember. So we were all at Lincolnville, and Neil appeared in a red roadster one day uh -huh. and said he was looking for a place. So I said, oh, I'll go with you. I'm looking for a place, too, because uh -huh. I was looking for a place. And uh, we drove around, and we found the place that Neil bought. Huh. But I, I, I already had seen it, but I knew that I didn't want it because it was really down a remote dirt road and I couldn't see myself, and Eli was a little kid at the time. I just couldn't quite see myself managing, but I knew Neil could, he could handle that sort of thing great. Uh -huh. And he did. But wait, I he want to made get back a wonderful, to the, beautiful the woods place painting out of it. question. I, you, you, it was, was it confirming, or was it the fact that Welliver was making this his whole career or yeah, his he whole lived work, there did that make it summer. less appealing? Did you feel like oh, somebody else is already in the woods and you didn't want no, the woods no, anymore? No, 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 it wasn't that. It was just the place was not, it would, but it would have been too much for me. Uh -huh. But I could see that it wasn't too much for him, you know. Uh -huh. It was perfect for him, that place. I don't mean the, the house, but I yeah. mean the, 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 mo the idea of continuing to work in wilderness, in the, in woods. the open woods. Yeah. Well, I had my woods across the road. Uh-huh. You know. Your your own patch. Uh, well, yeah. But, but you said that you're they right. lost this was, their magic this for This was you. in Lincolnville, yeah. So I got my place at about the same time, I guess. That's interesting. I don't know. I, I'm going to yeah. move on. I can see yeah, I'm not going to be able to, to um, yeah. nail you down on this. Yeah. yeah. So the woods lead us to a beautiful sequence of window paintings, which became right. maybe the most con consistent kind yeah. of motif yeah, of right. of the last of the whole of your career. Yeah. This is one of one of the early ones, right? This self-portrait in green windows. Right. It's not. Is it? It's not yeah. the first, I think. But it's not there were, because this one is window size, and uh -huh. I started with little panels first, uh -huh. and then began to think, you know, I ought to make these the same size as the window. That way, they could be more trompe l'oeil. And that's was one of the first ones of that. But series. it's only one of two, I guess, that include you. Yeah, yeah. Well, there was, uh, yeah. I don't particularly, I'm not that interested in the figure, I guess. Because uh -huh. I don't really include figures in much of anything. It's not something that I am torn to paint, you know. But so, it, so it's, it's one, I mean, whenever you're facing a window, your reflection is there. Yeah, I always see myself there. But you edit yourself but out you just every leave time. leave it out. Yeah, that's and, simple. And why? In There's this other case, stuff that's reflected too that you really don't want or need. So uh, you are culling stuff. Yeah. Yeah. In, why in this case did you decide not to cull? Not to what yeah. was it? The rhyme of the yellow and the yellow? Yeah, was yeah. it what? What made no, you? No, no. That the, that flower happened at the very end. Uh, everything else was done. The flower was there, and I thought, well, you know, I could push this whole window back if I put this flower in front. <clears throat> It'll kind of, you know, you use it for that kind of a device. So that's when I, I put it on at the end, kind of shaking in my boots, wondering, am I wrecking this whole damn painting, <laughs> putting this flower on top of You know, uh -huh. is this going to be, <laughs> will I have to scrub it out and somehow redo? But it was okay. Uh -huh. But you don't have any particular feeling about why you ended up in the picture? Well, I guess I saw myself and I 
put myself in. It may be that 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 I that it was more visible where I was standing in this case because of than the another. Light. Yeah, uh -huh. because of the light. It was just harder to ignore yourself. I was in a, a strong light, so it was. Whereas in the others, uh, maybe I couldn't see myself in the others, literally. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Or as well. Uh -huh. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna move on because I this um, one yeah this in fact Leanne wherever you are I don't have my phone up here so I'm not gonna have any sense when we get to be nearing uh, nearing a time when we should um, uh, you know move toward the question period will you let me know throw something mm, okay um, so this is um, view through Elliot's shack looking south this is a particularly yeah. beautiful beautiful one yeah, this I've probably is my favorite yeah of the, your favorite well, yeah of the whole series of most of them yeah huh it really turned out <laughs> it really it turned was out. fun it was yeah. fun to paint it was yeah yeah it, well it was such a, a, a wild vision anyway I'm standing this is a, a empty garage sitting in the woods mm -hmm. and I'm looking into the window and the window on the other side of the garage is right there. And behind it is the woods. And in back of me are the woods, which are very big in the reflection because they're behind me, close to me. It was just such a kick, the whole damn thing. And, uh, you know, it's dark inside the garage, but very light outside and light on the surface of the woodwork. So I... I I really enjoy doing that one. Yeah. yeah. It's, to me, it's a little bit like an architectural version of Monet's Water Lilies, where you're looking simultaneously mm. through a plane mm. and then bouncing off the plane back up, and yeah. you keep going back and forth and yet feeling the plane at the yeah. same time. Mm -hmm. So there was just a little bit of the shingles on the side. I don't know whether you can see them in this, on but the right. in yeah. the painting, they're, they're there. Yeah, that's a quirky decision. I mean, they're a little, more, you... they're a little more actual in reality. Yeah. A little bit more than we can just Slightly see here. Slightly more, But it's yeah, still not just much. an inch or something it's just of a shingle. Little, so it yeah. seems like a look, at, that's, and I think this happens a lot in your work, it's a little comical note, it's a little coy. That's funny, thing. what's funny about it? <laughs> well, don't you think that you just that it's a little off to one side? It's like the painting has been shifted one inch yeah. to the to the left, so that the shingles appear. Maybe I mean, it's a it's a super <laughs> deliberate decision. You decided. Like, oh yeah, yeah. Because it right the thing yeah well there's always that decision right is this thing smack dab in the middle or are you gonna move it slightly or you know where the thing is <clears throat> situated it's like the first big decision. Because the, so. the, this big grid could be kind of heavy and boring, right? That's a there's a, there's a threat yeah. to painting a, a window as a, as an icon. Yeah. But these paintings, it never, it never feels that way. This is. But a, I guess it, it wasn't boring to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was very exciting. <laughs> yeah. And then it rained. Then the next year, it did nothing but rain all summer. Uh huh. So I had to stay in the house. So then I was, you know, hooked on windows. So that, that one was from the, so I did a few from the inside because I couldn't go out. Yeah. This so this was at night. And that was exciting too because this weird shape turned up in the glass. This, you know, the glass is sometimes a little strange. Uh -huh. And uh, you get interesting shapes. Yeah, it's a sort of gremlin-y shape there. Right, right. Um, and the light is super, super bright. I mean, we got these sharp, sharp yeah, shadows that right. are a little bit like that last men's prison sunlight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pop art again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Here's a that's little true. detail. I yeah. Because um, this painting was just shown at Phil Alexander's gallery uh, just a couple months ago um, in a beautiful... Uh, show that included your most recent work and some older works like these. Um, so I thought we'd look at a few more of the windows. This yeah. is from the end of the 70s. Right. Um, and this is another fairly big but not life-sized one, I guess, yeah. right? 52 by 52? Not. Yeah, it's pretty big. Yeah, right. This one almost feels a little bit like there might be a memory of Birchfield. to see somebody that uh -huh. was ever important this, to you? This was an old derelict house uh -huh. uh, in Blairstown somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
can't remember where I found it. But anyway, uh, yeah. But sometimes these things are accidental. You're in Blairstown. You're looking at an architectural, uh, you know, architecture that's like what somebody like Birchfield was also painting. Mm -hmm. Or, or mm -hmm. was there actually a little echo that that animated in you thinking about prior American painting? No. Uh, certainly, I love Birchfield's work. Uh -huh. But I wasn't specifically thinking about Birchfield when I did that painting. Uh -huh. Yeah. But some painters, I mean, I huh. think it's an issue when, when, when something comes up, even if entirely by accident, does it become a distracting or a kind of animating and empowering circumstance? Oh, you mean circumstance when somebody to have else's to work gets in, in well, your head? Well, it's in your head, and you're thinking, do yeah. I need to cut it out, yeah. or do, can I, am, I, am I happy to have a dialogue here? Yeah. But you, you, weren't just, you just cut it out. It wasn't, it wasn't yeah, in yeah. your mind. Right. It wasn't. Yeah. No, I don't find that any help uh -huh. to be distracted by <laughs> Right. Right, it yeah. would just be a distraction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, afterwards, it's nice to think about that, but not there, while you're trying to Are there ever paint. times when it's helpful? Is there ever times when you feel like, you know, there's a kind of conventional pattern about art being in dialogue with the past in all kinds yeah. of ways. But yeah. are, there, are there times when you feel that to be true, or do you really not want any of that in your mind at all? I don't want all? that while I'm trying to work, yeah. I mean, I'm sure, you know, it's in your head anyway, <clears throat> but not something that you want to think about as a... So you want, yeah. like, the only an I uh, yeah, phrase. You exactly. want to be only an I. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. This is a beautiful one of these steamed windows. <clears throat> yeah, so this was, yeah, the frost. Are you thinking at all also about photography? I mean, some of these are images that a, a person mm. could photograph. You could, they I mean, could, there are in yeah. fact a lot of photographs yeah. of windows in various famous photographers' yeah. work. That's, um, is that, do you feel you want to push against what photography can do to show their no, paintedness? No, I'm just or? totally not thinking of it one way or the other about photography, uh -huh. really. Uh -huh. Yeah. Not a rival, not a, yeah. No. Yeah. Mm -mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> This is an unusually dramatic one with all that black space. Yeah, Just this was again a wonderful thing where, <clears throat> where it's a big empty building, completely dark inside, with a little window on the far side, that little square, mm -hmm. and some busted panes in the front. So in that one I thought of Mondrian. I thought, oh my God, look at this Mondrian. Yeah. Because you've talked about loving Mondrian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but especially his early, more right. kind of transitional, naturalistic yeah. work. Yeah, where he was out in the, in the landscape, really. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'll, I'll just show a few more of these windows, um, the falling window sash. So these, again, are all, well, you're using images that are, uh, buildings that are abandoned or, or broken down or well, in disrepair. Well, this was my shit. Oh, Which this is I your shed? That's one of my windows, my own <laughs> shed. And sure enough, the window went. So I thought, well, before I fix it, before I repair it, <laughs> I'll use it as a, as a subject. Yeah. Uh huh. And so would this have been painted from small sketches? Uh, it's, it's big well, again. That one, or did you take the I don't think I big bought, canvas uh, yeah, out? I think I do. It was only a matter of a few feet, so I took it. So uh, practical, big, easy yeah. to do. Yeah. You didn't have to go far. Yeah. I don't think I made a little one of that. Yeah. And how well, for one thing, it's too detailed to bother making a little one. I mean, the stuff that I wanted to show uh -huh. was, you know, I don't know how you do it small. It almost had to be big mm -hmm. to get all that reflection stuff in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How many of them are life size? Because you made a, some of these window I'd paintings. I take a you... yardstick out there uh -huh. and. You know, stretch your canvas is kind of window shape, and literally measure the window and draw it. And I was taking it directly from the window. Oh, you transfer the measurements? Yeah. Again, in like a in, lot of in cases, a painting like this. Yeah. Uh -huh. That one. So for this sure. is each mullion or whatever is the length that w was in the real. Uh -huh. Yes. And did you ever do that for any other paintings? Were there? Would you, would you use kind of actual measurements with it? You know, because in the well, 70s there was a new... The, for a lot of the windows, but, <coughs> but uh, I can't think of anything else that I would have mm -hmm. done that for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Huh. 
Because, for instance, uh, Sylvia Plimek, Mangold, and others did things of rulers. Because the thing is, you could go and, crazy with these window paintings if it weren't <laughs> accurate, actually. Uh, it, has, it has to be the same. Otherwise, you run into so, so many problems. With figuring You might just drawing. as well, you know, start with an accurate window so to it, begin with. Uh -huh. because there are going to be enough problems without having it the wrong shape, size, length, width. Uh -huh. When you get to painting the window panes, if they're all the wrong proportion, it's not going to work real well. So again, it's an expediency. It's so it's just, really like I'm it's photographing. It's very close to what's there. Casting. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not taking any artistic uh, liberties, no so invention. to speak. Yeah, uh -huh, uh -huh. very realistic. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's another relatively small one, and I think we have a pair of rain paintings. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. That are, would, these, these would have been in Cushing, or it's hard uh, to that tell. That was in Blairstown. In Blairstown. The window, yeah. Uh -huh. It's right there in the window. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And this and one... This one. With these beautiful dark this drops is, on is the... here. Oh, in, in the city? Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. a really st stunning one, I yeah, think. Yeah, I got into raindrops at a point. I seen, ooh, let's see if I can paint raindrops. <laughs> Without being fussy. Without being too fussy, uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because no. it's tr that's a tricky thing. They, they are automatically a fussy yeah, form. Yeah. That well, they're like a touch. Yeah. 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 Yeah, no, that, I, I didn't start drawing them or anything. Yeah. Uh -huh. So they're, and, and that's true in general. And, All and of also these they're moving, so you want to be kind of loose with it because they're running down the. The spirit of the motif you can't, requires. You can't yeah, fix it in a yeah, way. Yeah. 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 Mm. That's, that's interesting, and of course it makes sense. But so there are no drawings for this painting or any of these other ones we've been looking yeah. at. But meanwhile, you're also drawing, right? You're in right. drawing groups. You're right. in, in drawing right. with some of your tanager friends and yeah. subsequently. Yeah. And you were drawing from the model. We were drawing from the model. Mm -hmm. um, and yet those weren't, those weren't moving into your painting life. Well, all. a few of them did, the ones. Yeah, I did a big painting with six figures in it. <laughs> I'll show, I'll show yeah. one of those news yeah. a little later. But, but, uh, but I thought you didn't. Um, use drawings to make these kind of naked lady paintings that you yeah the naked until ladies. later yeah that was later right uh -huh. yeah yeah we were drawing we're drawing every summer uh -huh. and uh, the models outside it's very beautiful and I have a lot of drawings of of that so at a point I try to use some of them yeah uh -huh. um. I'm going to I'm going to finish the sequence of window paintings with right. these night ones. Right. And also there's uh, um this is a beautiful one. Um there's a there's a small group of fire paintings that Right. Right. Um I I think most people didn't understand what the subject was here, but it wasn't well, it a, was happening. A, it, it was a real fire. It was a real fire. It was down the road. Uh-huh. The, f the local fire department, which is all volunteer, mm -hmm. in, were, in Maine, were, uh -huh. in Maine uh -huh. yeah, they were offered this building to burn down for practice, putting out fires. So they were down there. The, my friends, the Wissermans, came over and said, you know, they're burning a house down. You want to come? <laughs> so we all raced down to watch the house burn down. And the local volunteer fire department was down there with the hoses uh -huh. and they'd put it out and then they'd light it up again and burn it some more. And the thing is the people that owned the house wanted it burnt down so they, they'd bought a new prefab and uh, I swear a day later after that thing was burnt down in about 24 hours there was a new house sitting there. Uh -huh. This house had all fallen into the, ba you know, was burned into the basement or whatever. I want to make a kind of stupid point about this, but yeah. you're, you're, you have, you, when, you, when that fire was going on, yeah. I mean, in a way, nothing could be more faster moving visually than a fire. Yeah. You, but, and you're making drawings, and did you even have... I was making drawings. Yeah. Right. So, and do you make color yeah. notes? Do you, how do you handle that part of it? 
How did I the make color. the color? Yeah, the color. Yeah, That's a good question. So that it was kind of made up. Uh-huh. Yeah. But the one thing you're not doing is taking photographs. I'm not taking photographs. Cuz I Although I'm, my friend uh, I think he had somebody had some photographs. Yeah. Uh-huh. But I wasn't taking photographs myself. And did you look at your were you tempted to look at your friend's photographs or did you feel that was not you, that not part of your process? You didn't wouldn't have wanted that. Yeah, I looked at those photographs, but I can't really remember how much, how closely I uh -huh. followed them. Yeah. But the color was like important. Yeah. So were the photographs color? I can't, they had to be. All photographs are color now, right? Yeah. Well. Or it's rare that you see anything black and white. That's really yeah, rare. Yeah, in 2007. Yeah. yeah. So right. I was, th I, the sm the, the, I was thinking the, you were going to take a principled stand and say, Alexi, no. No, I would never do that. Me, no, no. But no principled no, stands will no be taken. No, I principled stand. That's no. the principled no, whatever, stand. Yeah. Whatever works. Whatever works. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right. Okay. In this case, right. Yeah. Um, there's a beautiful group of stairway paintings. I just have one example here, but this, this, uh, they, some of them were shown at the gallery in January. Um, and this one's a big one too, right? I don't have the dimensions, but right. some it's, of them seem like life they're life size. size. Yeah. Pretty big, yeah. And they're... Um, well, that one was something I saw somewhere else. I saw it uh, one night in Rockport going to an art event. And on the way back to my car, somebody's door, it was summer and their door was wide open. And here was this thing, it was just amazing, uh -huh. with a staircase right in the door. So I thought, oh, I'll have to come back here and paint this, but it's right in the middle of town. I don't know whether I want to do it. So then I got home and I was somehow wandering around my own house, opened the door and realized, you know, <laughs> mine is exactly the same. I don't have to go to town. <laughs> <laughs> but I, it never occurred to me before I saw it somewhere else. Uh -huh. yeah. so, you, so then you used your own. Yeah, so then yeah. I set up at my leisure and, uh -huh. Uh -huh. you know, painted it. But it also, there's, there's an early American painting of Peel, one of the Peels, and the figure is standing right there on the door. I can never get this right. I've been sitting here thinking, I, I guess I shouldn't mention the Peel. And then yeah. she mentions it. Yeah, 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 <laughs> right. Yeah, because yeah. that's the that's that's a kind of trompe l'oeil painting. Yeah, uh, with right. the kid going up the stair, the two of them exactly. going up the stairs. Yeah, yeah, which is kind of a similarly compressed kind of comically yes, theatrical similar, space, right, right? To what you have here, with without yeah. a figure. Yeah, but with the same sense of a kind of stairway pushing right. forward. Yeah. And yeah, it's kind of. And it, te it intrigues me, the idea of here's a doorway and, you know, the staircase is right in it. Right, a door that's, that's a stair, the two things kind of yeah, conflated, yeah. the two right, categories. Right. Um, okay, so then there, this isn't exactly a, a window painting, but there's um, this mirror appeared right. in a bunch of different yeah. paintings of yours, interiors. Right. Um, from quite early on, I think there's some... This is, this is earlier than the other one, but yeah, by quite yeah. a bit, yeah. Right, I got involved painting in my loft, mm -hmm. and uh, I guess I'd been doing the paintings in Maine. I can't remember which came first, but whether the, the window's here or the window's there, or blah, 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 you know. But also the mirror, I love the shape of the mirrors. There was that nice oval, and then there was the rectangle of the other mirror, and then the window, and... That little staircase is a set of boxes. So, you know, I just, uh, and the radiator, the radiator is just like a great it's, subject too. It's beautiful there. I don't radiator. think of a radiator as being um, that clean or that um, radiant. Mm -hmm. But um, Philip Perlstein, your friend, is also painting mirrors around the same time. There's a kind of right. a mirror thing going on. And yeah. some some of mm -hmm. contemporaneous. That's right. He's doing figure. it with nudes and yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then here's this group of tunnel paintings, which mm -hmm. are kind of uh, a little bit like a window in some way, a kind right. of central. Right. They, they frame the view. Yeah. Yeah. And and these were mostly in New Jersey. New Jersey. Yeah. Small. This one's quite quite small. Right. And then there's some of them that are, um, I guess, most of. This is a beautiful one to me, where you're where 
dropping so far down yeah. into that sunlit huh. patch in the yeah. distance. Uh-huh. This this was like the perfect spot because there's a tunnel uh-huh. and you can see where the railroad thing is at the very top. Oh, yeah. Just, yeah I and it's like a bank with the trees and stuff, but it's an old railroad embankment with no railroad anymore. It was built years and years ago. Uh-huh. And then this beautiful old house was sitting there, which was such a classic rectangular shape. It was like, oh boy, look at this. <laughs> what a still life, you know. I couldn't set up one more perfect. Right, with these yeah. two boxy objects right. sort of on either side of a seesaw almost. Yeah. 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 Leanne, are we good for time? We have. Okay, I'm going to accelerate then a little bit. So, um, <coughs> more of these beautiful road paintings. Um, mm-hmm. And this, I'm, I'm always interested in the way I think somebody in an interview said, challenged you saying that you don't have a style, that you adapt what, the way you paint to the motif, to what... Hmm. And, and I, I don't think you answered. This is John Yao because, in the, in oh, the rail. Oh, okay. But I, does still it feel, have, I haven't thought about it, and I have no answer. <laughs> I still don't have an answer. Uh, yeah? But your style uh, certainly changes. I mean, I think you have yeah. several styles, maybe, uh-huh. that you... You know, like yeah. you employ a scrubbier touch like here, yeah. or a clean, hard edge touch there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. This is huh. this is this group of laundry mm. paintings. Um, mm-hmm. Again, kind of shape making. Yeah. And empirical. Right. And some of them differ. I mean, for me, the this. This one and these two, this pair, are interestingly interesting in that this one seems so architectonic and solid yeah. in a kind of, um, uh, you know, in a, uh, in a hi- almost hieratic way, where it's yeah. kind of pa- the ground plane is parallel to the frame of the rectangle. Right. This one, everything is kind of tilting and yeah. bunching and feels more organic, and mm-hmm. um, it's a whole different kind of form making. I was thinking of Stanley Spencer when I did that one. Oh really, Stanley I like Spencer? His work. Wow. Yeah. Huh. yeah. Yeah. So that's a case where an, there is an alliance or a, a useful connection, a little bit, or a yeah. Um, and this is another another odd one to me, where the yeah. apple tree and the architecture um, seem almost like they're from different planets, where there's this kind of well, one's a circle and one's a rectangle. <laughs> I mean, I thought it was pretty. Pretty uh, uh-huh. geometric, but you're highlighting, yeah. you're kind of theatricalizing that yeah, difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the reason I painted it was I pulled up to my place when I just arrived, uh-huh. sometime in June, and the tree was like, oh my God, it's just it was going crazy blooming. So I realized I had to paint it, and, and uh, so that's what happened. Yeah. And going crazy blooming, I mean, it seems to me like you were wary of natural beauty in yeah. your earlier work sometimes. And yeah. in the most recent garden paintings and flower paintings, mm-hmm. you're, you've given up some of that wariness and that you're willing to have these bright floral colors and, yeah. um, mm-hmm. and treat flowers as a motif that's part of nature, not part of decoration or ornament. Yeah. These bees, so these, um, yeah. the cow parsnip is, um, is a big one, right? This is a huge painting. It is a, it is a huge painting. One of your biggest. And it was also a huge flower, so it was kind of fitting that, yeah, I mean, it also, again, was an event that wasn't going to, it was like the fire, it wasn't going to happen again. Uh, these plants were planted by my friend, Leslie, and they were way out of bounds when it comes to six feet tall and you know three feet across and then it turned out that they were a hazard because they create millions of seeds and they'll spread all over the countryside and you have to not let that happen or you won't have anything but cow parsnips from here to (laughs) Albany or something you know so but it was great the year that they were there to look at Uh and to paint so it was a fleeting uh-huh. A floral event, let's put it that way, yeah. 
Um, and then there's a group of paintings of spider webs. Right. I saw these in the gallery, and I didn't at first realize what they what were. What they were, yeah. But they're um, some sometimes quite diffuse and open shapes. Sometimes, as yeah. in this very small one, yeah, it's, it's almost a kind of painting within the painting, a little abstract um, uh, kind of tarp sitting there, getting punctured by the grass. By blades. the grass, yeah. yeah, yeah, they're wonderful. But also, I mean, these spider webs don't last that, long. That's a certain. That's an event also that there's a certain month in the summer when they're there, yeah. you know, yeah. briefly. Um, okay, a couple of the more naked things. ladies, yeah. So, and there was a show here I, uh, like 10 years ago of yeah. some of these naked lady paintings uh, uh -huh. mm -hmm. made from drawings, right? I yeah. think David Cohen curated a show in the gallery downstairs. Right, right. A right. very beautiful show. So yeah. I didn't focus on that because some of the people in the audience would have had a chance to see it. Um, but they're, they're kind of explicitly you thinking about Cezanne, right? Maybe. I mean, <laughs> don't we all? I mean, he's part of our history. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I, not when I'm painting it. I'm not thinking Cezanne, no. Uh -huh. No. But, but I couldn't tell you who I might be thinking. I'm just trying to get the figures to look like they're in a group happy together. Because the drawings are just one figure at a time, you know. So the the challenge for me is let's put these together so they look like they really were there all together at the same time. That they work in terms of sunlight they and weren't. shade it was just and space. One. Yeah, it's just a bunch of drawings, yeah. So it's so, really kind of a Meyerbridge sequence. It's really one, or in a way it is, yeah. one yeah. figure. Right. But it's also a kind of hippie commune. Yeah, the the uh, the trees on the left are probably from the place where we were drawing, because uh -huh. they have a lovely, a beautiful area with uh -huh. lovely gardens and so forth. But all right, we're, we have to move a little too fast here, just because I I don't want to overstay our welcome. But um, these beaut there's a set then that you began doing just recently of shadow paintings, where you're right. looking down at the grass. And, yeah. and painting yourself, painting, right. sometimes right. with the painting inside the painting included and sometimes just pure shadow. Right. I love these images. And they're so, uh, they're kind of graphic, but they're um, super deft. And, and here again, I think that there's a sense of humor that... Um, yeah, I, they are. Not I every... that they're funny. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You've got like a painting cap on. Yeah, right. Yes. Um, that was, that's the most problematic, was getting my head on and wondering which way to make the hat. You know, you get very, I like this solution better. For, for the my head. head. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's a little bit like the grass blades puncturing the spider web here, having these that's little true, eruptions of yeah, dark yeah. tufts. Yeah. Right. And the sunlight is kind of coming through the re the rectangle of the easel of the canvas. Well, is I'm, that what's happening? I'm in front, you know, and the light is. No, but I meant just in the middle. The the there's a kind of openness in the middle of okay. the top of the rectangle. Yeah. You know what I mean, where the I light goes through. I think the painting through. is pretty much the same green from one end to the other. It's not uh -huh. really. I don't think it varies that much in reality. Well, it, it doesn't yeah. matter. I guess I was yeah. just thinking about that. Let's end with these three, which are all from last summer. Right. These are the most recent. And these yeah. were big paintings of... Seed pods. Uh-huh. Yeah, mostly, uh, yeah, the one is uh, Queen Anne's Lace. Two of them are Queen Anne's Lace. On the, the right. The two on the right. Yeah. And the one on the left was some kind of allium. So these were all in the show at the gallery in January. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And, and they're made up in Maine, I guess. Yes. Yeah. And you're like still continuing summer. your triangular yeah, painting yeah. life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I was really clever, I would have arranged to get a flower from each site, but I, I couldn't work it out. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think we'll end and we'll take a few questions. Thank you, Lois. Thank you. I like to...